Hey everyone, it's Dylan from North Bay, and today I want to talk to you guys about what's going on, what's the beef, what's the issue between native and non-native species. Why is it such a big deal, and why do people always freak out about it? So basically what's going on is uh, species have adapted for their own specific environments for a long time, and this creates a type of relative balance within the ecosystem. So when a new plant, animal, or fungus is introduced into the environment by humans artificially, it gets the whole balance out of whack and oftentimes creates a degraded condition because native species now have to compete with non-native species for valuable resources like food, space, shelter, as well as water. These invaders make it extremely challenging for native species to live their lives to the fullest, but they don't become an invasive species until they pose an economic or ecological threat or threaten human health. 499, 500. Ugh. All right guys, well, I know we've all had those people or things that have come up in our lives that prevent us from living our life to the fullest or trying our best. Whether it be a classmate, family member, community member, drugs in the community, violence, or an ecological degraded condition. It prevents us from filling our niche. Well, it's the same sort of thing that's happening in the ecosystem when a uh, invasive species comes in and creates a degraded condition. So humans oftentimes introduce these invasive species on purpose like the cane toad in Australia, or the nutria in Maryland. Now, the reasons for introduction are varied, but the impacts are dramatic. So nutria are a semi-aquatic rodent species native to South America that was introduced back in the 1940s. They may look similar to beavers and muskrats, our two native semi-aquatic rodents, but they don't have the same population controls and predators. This allowed their populations to boom, and they were able to destroy thousands of acres of wetlands across Maryland, Virginia, and Delaware. Other species are accidentally brought into an area, but their impacts can still be catastrophic, such as the wavy leaf basket grass, or the Japanese still grass, as well as the emerald ash borer. If you go hiking like I'm about to do, Oftentimes you can see these non-native species competing with our native species for natural resources, and you can find them all over the place. The Phragmites behind me was an introduced species that has taken over a lot of wetlands and outcompeted the native reeds, creating a degraded condition. Now, these were introduced by humans, and so remember that even if your actions seem small, they can have significant impacts on your community and your ecosystem. Well, what can we do? We can minimize disturbance areas like this behind me that invite in invasive species like bamboo, invasive honeysuckle, and English ivy, kudzu, mile a minute, or lesser celandine, multiflora rose, Japanese stilt grass, and wavy basket grass, which can capitalize on these disturbed areas. You can also avoid spreading invasive species by not being convinced to buy them at a nursery. Uh, plants like Japanese barberry, burning bush, and butterfly weed are incredibly invasive and hard to keep in your backyard because they have high seed dispersal and grow incredibly rapidly. It's important to keep wildlife wild and in its natural habitat. So don't release any live bait, pets, exotic plants, or any other biotic hitchhikers that you pick up on your vacation. Also, make sure that you clean off your boots and your boats so that you don't give a free ride to these invasive species like grass seeds, hydrilla, or zebra mussels, which can quite easily be spread from one location to another when you don't clean off your equipment. Also, Avoid moving firewood from one location to another because it can introduce that devastating emerald ash borer to new locations. Scout out and report any observations that you make of invasive species entering new areas and report it through the Mid-Atlantic Early Detection Network, which has its own app. You can work to remove invasive animal species and tell other people to do the same. For example, 
You can fish for snakeheads. There might be a hot spot in your area. You can also do research into the best times of year to remove invasive plants and how to properly dispose of them. So I challenge you to take action and spread the word. Build your team and do your research so that you can have a positive impact on your community. We brought in these invaders and it's up to us to be positive filters and control them. Remember that your actions can have a positive impact on your ecosystem and your community. So be the change that you want to see in the world. I'm Mr. Dylan from North Bay and I hope that you have a great day.